ngā koutou katoa, koutou e wakarongo mai nei ki tēnei o ngā hōtaka, uh, te haora mō ngā tai oi me ki, uh, nā kei te mei matakuikui ki koutou katoa, kwa pai wā, ki te noo tai ki a mātou uh, i tēnei a i a i pō. Tēnā tātou, hello to everybody out there who is listening in or watching us. Uh, kei te mātaki mai koutou, ki rungi i tēnei o ngā pāpā o mata ora, ki rungi i tēnei o tō tātou nei oe tuki manoa. Te kurimako o Taranaki. Thank you all for joining us tonight. As you can see, Ite whanau, you can see it does not need to be explained what is going on here at the moment. We have the honour and the privilege of interviewing and speaking with uh, mini, Te Minita, uh, Penny Henare, nā reire e mehi ana ki koe e Penny, uh, kwa noho mai koe ki tō mātou nei tāra, tēnei a ia i pō. Nau mai haro mai ki Taranaki. Uh, ai, koe nei ngā mehi mai i te tonga, uh, mai i a ngā rua hene rangi hoki. Uh, nā reira, uh, ka tuku te rākau ki e nei uh, wahine e noho mai ana ki taku taa, ki te mehi hoki ki koe. Ana uh, ka tuku te rākau hoki ki a koe peni mau te kupu whakamutunga o tēnei wahanga o te hōtaka. Uh, nā reira, tēnā koe te raunatanga, uh, ai, kei a koe te wā. Tēnā koe anti ti ai, o tira tēnā koutou e mātakitaki mai nei, ki tēnei o ngā hōtaka taiohi, nau mai haere mai, uh, nau mai haere mai e te manuhiri no te nota, me ki whakatau mai rā ki tō tā mātou maunga tito ea ki Taranaki. Uh, ko wai tēnei taio i e kōrero atu, no te maunga tito ea, ana ko ngā rauru kita i, no ngā rauru kita i ki te tonga, no te pakaku i, no tānga oi, no ngā rui i nerangi, he pāranga anō o ki ki mania poto ki te aroa ki kaita kaitau. Engari i tupu ake au ki te ro e o Ngāti Tuaranga Tira ki Porirua, kei te aura a au e noo ana i tēnei wā kei waukina. Tēnā koutou. Ka pai tēnā nō tātou e te anau, tēnā nō koe e te minita e pēni, nau mai aere mai ki roto o Taranaki roe. Uh, Ano hoki ki a koutou katoa e mātakitaki mai ana, tēnei te mehi mai oha. Uh, ko hene noi wano Bryant tēnei, he uri anō hoki o te maunga tito hea, o puta waki hoki, Ngāti Awa, Ngāti Mutinga, Ngāti Tama, Te Ati Awa, Taranaki Tūturu, uh, ko au te tahi o ngā kaimahi uh, ki te taho o tui ora e pāna ki tēnei kaupapa noi e te mate karauna. O reira, tēnā nō tātou e te iwi. Ai, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou katoa a, kwa hono mai nei, a, kia koutou anō hoki e oku tuahine, kwa whakari tēhia i tēnei taumata kōrero. Ai, e mihi atu ana a hau ki tō koutou, tō tātou maunga a taranaki e, e tū tei mai ana a, ki te uru. A, kāti e whai haere atu ana au i ngā tapu ai o tōku tupu nā rāhiri a, me tana moenga tua ono. A, ka pā mai a ngā kuhi ki roto i a koutou a uh, e hi a rautau ki muri. Nā, i tēnei wātonu ko te mokopuna a rāhiri, ko whai haere nei o nga tapu wai ka tau ki roto i a koutou e o kutuahine, koutou katoa kei te wā kāinga, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou. Rāhiri, tia, ok, ok, ko ira te, te hononga ki Waingarui a mātou i tēnei wā. Uh, thank you, Penny, uh, Minister, Minister? Penny Henare, kei tō tātou taha i tēnei. Oh, Penny, thank you, Penny. <laughs> thank you for coming in this afternoon to talk to um, our Taio E. So at the moment, it's looking more like a little bit of a Ask Your Aunties panel right here with Hene Nui and I. Uh, we were the ones that they had to go to when our other Taio E, because they're all so busy, they're all actually at Mai, but we managed to get Te Raunatanga um, in on board with us this afternoon, which we're really, really happy um, to have the true, authentic voice of our rangatai. And uh, she was charged with getting a few questions together for you uh, this afternoon. And so, yeah, te raunatanga, ka tuku te rākau ki koe e no, uh, ki te patai i ngā patai kua puta mai i ngā rangatai. Tino pai, tēnā koe. Nā reira, ko titi o ngā pātai, te pātai tuatai, a tēnā whakamuhio mai, he hate take kai te roe o tarana ki koe. Hai, e, kia muhio mai tātou katoa, 
te wahi o te toru tau a toru wiki kimuri i haere mai au ki te noho ngā tahi ki ngā iwi ki ngā rato ngā hauora me te poari hauora o tēnei wahi kia kōrero i te take e pāna ki te mate uruta a kā mutu ko te aronga nui, ko te whainga nui a ko te tuku i te kano ārai mate ki tō tātou iwi e noho mai ana ki te uru nei a kā mutu ka whakarite hia e mātou Kia hoki mai anō au ki roto i tēnei wāhi a tāhua. Kia kite atu mehe mea ko whakatutuki hia i te tahi mahere. Kia piki te tatauranga o te hunga Māori ko a whakawhiwhia ki te kano ārai ma tēnei. Nō reira, koina te take ko a hoki mai anō au e ngari i te rā nei. Ko te mea tino paira wātu ki au nei i hoki atu a hau ki tōku kohanga reo. I haere au ki te kohanga reo o ngā motu I au i te wā e tamariki ana, nā i te rānei Ko a tū hono ki etahi o ngā whaia e tino mea Hoki atu ana ngā mahara Rawe, rawe te wakarongo So Pēne, you mentioned about the situation here within Taranaki um, specifically around strategizing around um, Aoano Māori. And Taranaki Taiohi have some of the lowest vaccination rates um, within Aotearoa, and it's something that we're seeing across Aotearoa. And what are your whakaro as, as to why we're seeing that? How's that? Can you hear me again? Tapai. Um, so it's it's actually similar to many of the discussions we're having with rangatahi around the country. It's about getting the right information, making sure we can dispel misinformation, but it's also about connecting with them on platforms and through whānau, uh, which has proven to be very effective. For example, you know, the government can pour as much support as it wants to into social media, but our rangatahi, they're smart, they're super koi. And, you know, when they see a message that is clearly generated through government or something like that, they tend not to not to uh, pay too much attention to it. So it's about getting those unique uh, taiohi rangatahi voices to be able to speak to taiohi rangatahi to their tuakana, teina and tuahine. So uh, what we noticed here in Taranaki, for example, and I met um, a couple of fantastic rangatahi today who talked about how they think best to connect with the rangatahi here to be able to have the conversation in the first instance. Sadly, when we talk about the vaccine, people only think about the vaccine event, the vaccination itself, when actually what our rangatahi are telling us is, let us have a conversation. Let us wānanga as friends and as rangatahi how, uh, you know, what we might discuss or think about with respect to the vaccine and COVID-19 more broadly speaking. Uh, and then step out of the way and empower them to have those conversations with themselves. And I think that's the number one lesson as I've been around the country, and it's the same here in Taranaki. But I think the only difference, uh, and um, now I'm being biased, is I've seen the rangatahi here and spoken to a number of them. And, you you know, I think you guys have all the ingredients to, to engage in the way that our young people deserve and in a way that will bring our young people forward. You, you talked really briefly there for a second on the misinformation and the disinformation. Like that's something that we 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 are struggling with. We know that um, uh, in the bigger scheme of things, it's a it's kind of a small proportion really of people who are, are putting the misinformation and the disinformation out there. However, it is having a larger effect on some of our people, not all of them. Is there any strategy in place? I, I know you talked a little bit about it, but can we drill down a little bit more on, on how or what we can do? Uh, we have a rangatahi lens on it, but I, I guess what we're looking for too is something that's um, coming from the government in regards to that. Yeah, that's, that's a really good part. I, what we've got to be careful of doing, and this is and the government's guilty of it in the past, is, oh, we'll put the kōrero on social media and then all of a sudden our rangatahi will know well, that's only one tool in the toolbox that we should be able to use. Uh, the other one, and I take some lessons from my visit uh, last week to Otaki College, 
uh, where I sat down with the senior Māori students there and they were split almost in half where you had one half that said, actually, it's through our whānau where we have these kinds of engagements that will help us, where the likes of our koro and kuia uh, and, and our elders and our family, our pakeke, are able to sit down and direct us and support us and talk to us about these matters. So we need to support that wānanga style as well amongst families and communities. And then, of course, the other half of those um, rangatahi talked about getting important information through social media. And of course, you know, like I said, they sniff out whether or not it's got a government smell on it, if you like. They want to know that um, the people who they're engaging with on social media are, are authentic, uh, that they're there because of their own will and because that's what they believe in, not just that's because that's what they've been paid to do. Um, and we need to be able to do both of those things to make sure that we can support social media as much as we can. But ultimately, what we find with our whānau is that's the best way to do it. And I always use the example of my grandmother, who's 84, and she just said to the entire whānau, all 100 of us or however many of us, don't come and see me unless you're vaccinated. And so that was a, the kind of motivation we needed. But we know we're going to have to use as many tools as possible. And I hope that on this particular kaupapa and this taumata kōrero that you've organised here, I'm up for those ideas. Uh, who better than to ask our rangatahi to give us that feedback and those ideas in the, in, in the, in the hope that we can support them to do that. Yeah, yeah. pai tērā. He pātai ono tāu e te rauna. Aina, uh, ko te pātai tuawha, tūtu o ngā pātai no ngā tāu i, that it was recently highlighted that the DHB haven't prioritised Māori enough. And Taiohi specifically, which are a larger demographic here in, within Taranaki, were the last group to be offered the vaccine. What are the government doing now to address this? E tēnā koe. Um, look, let, let, let me be quite clear. Uh, from the start of the vaccine rollout as a government, our direction to DHBs and Māori health providers was vaccinate the whānau. You know, it wasn't a case of if Nanny came in and we vaccinated Nanny and then we said to all of the young people and all the whānau, haere, hoki mai when, when you're eligible. That's just inefficient. That's not a smart way to do it. So we were clear from the start that you needed to take a whānau approach. What we've seen is um, everyone doing good stuff. Don't get me wrong here. The DHB, we're doing what the DHB does and the DHB does well. Iwi and the likes of Tui Ora, we're doing fantastic work to be able to connect with our community. But what we found is actually there's a lot to be had for mahi ngātahi. Now, there's a lot to be achieved with mahi ngātahi. And when we get the likes of the DHB, GP clinics, iwi providers, as well as iwi leading the approach for this entire rohe, um, the numbers have certainly picked up and they've got to be willing to do that. So there are a number of things there. One relationship. It's important that the DHB has a strong relationship with our iwi, our Māori health providers, and most importantly, our community, in particular young people. Two, uh, is that we can only do this together. Uh, we know, for example, that yes, our Māori health providers are absolutely amazing, but uh, an interesting statistic, uh, approximately 84% of Māori actually don't go to Māori health providers, they go to normal GP clinics, they go to hospitals and, and medical centres, and they don't necessarily go to Māori health providers. So we need everybody paddling in the same direction. Now, just to the final part of your partai with respect to our rangatahi, um, the reason we focused on our kuia komatu at first was because COVID taught us they were the most at risk. That's why, in fact, Māori vaccination rates for kaumātua kuia are the highest in the country across all ethnicities. It's absolutely fantastic. And we did that to protect our kaumātua kuia. Now, bringing our young people on board later was part of the plan, yes. But the problem we had was Delta. The Delta strain of COVID-19 changed the game for us big time. It meant that it didn't discriminate, if you like. It, it, it index young people as much as it impacts other demographics. So we've got a job now, obviously, to connect with our young people to make sure that they feel safe um, in receiving the vaccine and that their partai are answered. So, 
yes, I accept that um, we're not where we wanted to be, that's for sure. Uh, but all the ingredients for success here in Taranaki, they're already in the cake. Now it's time to bake the cake and we'll all be eating banana cake aini. Or chocolate Kapai. cake. <laughs> Kapai. Um, when you look at the situation Taiohi are facing and you think back to yourself and um, what you went through growing up, do you think that 18-year-old Pini Hienari would have got vaccinated and why? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I was 18 about three years ago, so it's not too far away. Um, I remember when I was young and I was, I mean, I'm probably, I, I'm not the exception, but a little bit different because I grew up in a household of Maori health practitioners and Maori health leaders. For example, my father was the head of the Ngāti Hine Health Trust uh, when I was growing up. So we were always around uh, the kind of medical expertise, which will have meant that I would have gotten uh, the vaccine by default because of them. But if I think about what my motivations were when I was 18, you know, it was about seeing friends playing rugby, uh, hanging out with the whānau, playing sport, which would have ultimately have forced me to decide whether or not I would have received uh, the vaccine. And I think I would have, um, simply because I want, I'd like to play rugby with my bros, travel around, go to the rugby tournaments, etc. And in order for us to do that and do it safely, I would have come to the conclusion, I'm sure, that I would have been vaccinated. So that's not always the case for all of our rangatahi, uh, which is why I think we really need a whole heap of different tools to be able to do this. We can't just, like I say, put it on social media and hope for the best that our, our, our whanau are out there listening. So, um, yeah, the short answer is yes, I would have probably been vaccinated. And if I chose not to, I suspect that I would have probably got a hiding from one of my aunties or uncles. But, you know, everyone's different. <laughs> You would have been vaccinated. I think that that's pretty clear. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> it would have been your choice or someone else's choice, but you would have made the choice to get vaccinated. Um, so, you know, I mean, we're talking a lot here about what's happening with our taiohi, um, the choices to have the vaccination, to not have the vaccination, um, the whānau uh, making those decisions for some of our rangatahi as they may be too young to make that decision safely for themselves. Um, and, you know, we've got to wonder about the, the impacts that all of this is having on the mental health of some of our um, taio'i, some of our rangata'i as well. Um, what does that reach out from the government look like to our taio'i at the moment who, you know, some of them are feeling overwhelmed, like, well, well, even adults, actually. But, you know, what does it look like from a government perspective? What are we doing there to make sure that our taio'i and our rangata'i are looked after? That is an awesome point. Uh, I know we're talking about vaccines, but this whole COVID thing has really highlighted um, a lot of the mental health pressures on whānau and our young people. You know, the uh, uh, when you're not able to connect with your peers or, or with your friends because of lockdown or whatever it might be, has really pushed, um, and I'll be upfront, pushed our health and our mental well-being um, services to the absolute limit. And so in order for us to... Uh, see how we can support our, our rangatahi during these difficult times. Uh, there's a number of ways we can do it. One, we can focus on the whānau. We've got to look after the whānau. And the other way we can do that is we can continually invest in how do we make sure that our rangatahi feel safe at school. And that's okay. There's already lots of opportunities where there are counsellors at school, amongst other things, and their peers. But, you know, it's not everyone's thing to do that at school. So we've got to make sure that the likes of Tui Ora here in uh, Taranaki are able to have the resources to reach out to our young people to be able to say it's okay to have a kōrero. So I'm really up for any of the recommendations or suggestions that our young people might have. I know Tui Ora, um, having discussed it with a number of the kaimahi there, are really concerned about it, and I want to see how we can support them to support our young people locally. Mm -hmm. Tēnā koe. Kia koe te rauna. Tēnā koe taua whakautu. Uh, ko te pātai koe tau atu koe ki te kuratua roa Spotwoods Peange, kare anō kia tai atu rānei. Um, so you may or may have not 
attended Spotswood College and visited the college over there in Ngamotu. Can you please tell us about what you're hoping to discuss with Spotswood or what you have already discussed with them? Yeah, so I'm scheduled to catch up with them and, and really, you know, those opportunities, just like this kind of a taumata kōrero, the opportunity is to listen. Um, I said last week I visited Otaki College uh, and learned so much spending, I think it was just over an hour with the senior Māori students there talking about everything from COVID-19, the vaccine, education, opportunities, amongst other things. But hearing that voice is really important because, um, you know, I read a lot of reports and a lot of um, writings about the impacts on our young people, but hearing it for myself is extremely important in helping us towards making many of the decisions that we have to make. Of course, if I can convince one or two of our, our rangatahi at the college to uh, seriously consider the vaccine, then I'll take that opportunity to do that too. What I found when I've gone to a number of colleges now, uh, it's just simply putting a face to be able to answer questions that they might have. So to date, I've uh, visited, for example, Whangarei Boys High School, uh, where they vaccinate uh, uh, in partnership with one of the health providers in Whangarei. Last week, I was at Otaki, and Otaki have a vaccination clinic set up on the school side. So the conversations were really about, you know, things like uh, what our rangatahi are asking is, uh, is the vaccine safe and how can they access it? What where can they access better information, et cetera? And I suspect that'll be the same when I get to Spotswoods College when I get there. Ka pai. Um, we do have a few more questions. Te Aurangi and I were talking a bit earlier, if that's okay. Um, but um, before I pass it over to Te Aurangi, just to ask on the plan moving forward, um, just wanted to know, you know, we've talked a lot about prioritising the, the haura of the entire whānau and that being the real key to unlock well-being for our people and it starts in our own whare and it starts in our own hapu, hapuri. And there's been a lot of kōrero around the Māori Health Authority and um, just, which is an amazing piece of mahi and congratulations on that and we look forward to seeing the many hua that, that come from that. Um, how do you see um, Taiohi being a part of that moving forward and what an exciting time to be a young person knowing that you're going to step forward into something that is Māori owned. Just any whakaru. That a, that. Yeah, that's an awesome part. I, you know, I grew up in the DHB system and it has it has served some of our people okay, but for the most part, it hasn't served our people very well. So the Māori Health Authority gives us a really grand opportunity now to redesign the future health landscape for our people. But I want to be quite clear. In building a Māori health authority, we didn't want to just build a fantastic tuddy in Wellington. What we need is strong health leadership locally. So the legislation that's been introduced in the House now allows for Taranaki Whanui to sit down and say, OK, what does our well-being look like moving forward? And to plan for that and to be resourced for that, but more importantly, to execute that plan. You know, when I was over at Ōtaki recently, I always think about Whakatupurua Mano, which was an amazing, amazing visionary uh, kaupapa that saw what we see today with Raukawa uh, and the whānau there. It's absolutely amazing. What the Māori Health Authority opportunity has given us, again, is to sit down as iwi and hapu and whānau and say, where are we in 2050? What do we look like? And what do we need to be well? And I'm really excited that the health um, uh, reforms will give us that chance. And of course, with that, when we do that kind of long-term planning, we do it with, and it's got to be led by our young people. Because, you know, in 2040, for example, uh, when we commemorate 200 years of Te Tiriti or Waitangi, um, you know, I'm probably, hopefully I'm still around, but, you know, um, it'll be our young people leading us on the marae then. It'll be them, our young people of today, that will be taking us into the future. My expectation is that iwi, like Taranaki Whanui, will engage their young people and let them design that health future for Taranaki Whanui. It's an exciting time, um, and I'm... And however we can do it with our whānau and our iwi, I'm all there. Ka pai. 
Um, yeah, I think this question kind of carries on with that. And, and just referencing some of the kōrero that you um, had earlier on in the show in regards to um, the great efforts that our Māori uh, kaupapa Māori services and our iwi have been able to stand up across the motu, um, but particularly here um, in Taranaki, you know, even thinking back to last year, uh, when we went into level four lockdown the first time, how our people mobilised. And then, like you said, Delta has, um, it, it's a change of hand. It's another set of cards that we have to play. And so we've seen our uh, our iwi and our Māori, kaupapa Māori services do something different again um, in regards to the vaccination. So we know down here in Ngārua Henerangi, we've worked hard on the marae clinics um, in Ngāti Ruanui. They're out, they're out in the streets, literally, um, getting our people vaccinated. How how can we use you guys? How can we get you guys um, to support us more in, in that sense? Like, what can we do? Yeah, or not what can we do? How can you guys help us more to carry that on? Yeah, that's a great part. I, um, to be upfront, I'm coming down to uh, Pātea and South Taranaki uh, to come and see it for myself. And that's the important thing about hitting the road uh, it's not about reading it in a report. It's about seeing it for myself. Uh, and, you know, I know there's fantastic opportunities on Mariah. There's all these other GP clinics, for example, that are vaccinating. But we need to explore how we make it more and more available to our people. You know, some interesting statistics. We find that uh, for young Maori men between 20 and 40 years of age, they don't necessarily want to go to a marae. They don't want the kind of one-to-one, one-on-one engagement with the health provider. They literally want to drive through, wind their window down, get vaccinated, sit there, listen to their sounds for 30 minutes and then drive off. And that's okay. So we need to be able to look across the community in South Taranaki and everywhere for that matter on how we make those opportunities available to that community. So I'm looking forward to coming and seeing it for myself. Uh, and then once I see it for myself and we have a good quarter with our whanau that are doing the mahi, we can do the planning to see how we'll continue to support that mahi. But that's what we're here for, is ongoing support. And I think uh, in particular here in Taranaki, you fellows are doing an awesome job. And your kai mahi, from your aunties to your nurses, to they're just absolutely fantastic. Everyone I've spoken to um, will have our ongoing support and we'll look, look forward to continue to do that. Kapai. Um, it's great to hear that because, like you say, we know that our people don't necessarily like going to the traditional clinic. Some do, some do, and some have had to. But, uh, and with our Taioi also, um, we've had clinics and offices in town, and they'd rather come to that, have clinics in our office in Manaya, and they'd rather come down to that. Just like you say, drive through, get. <laughs> Get the injection. Sit in the sit in the car. And listen to their sounds. Um, you're right. So it is good to hear that there will be the support there for the untraditional cl- uh, clinics, and even um, not necessarily just focusing on the marae clinics and uh, and the camper vans too. It's good to hear that there's other things that uh, you guys are considering. Nareira uh, itene kotea huane kuira nga nga patai katoa. Um, there is one thing we'll leave it with you to um, fuck a cuppy there. He, he, he patai anō tā kōrua, uh, wahi ne mā, karekau, ka pai, ka tuku te rākau ki koe pēni. Um, our rangata i want to hear what your, your parting words are for them all, I guess, and maybe some comforting words for their parents and their kaumātua too. Ka pai, uh, tēnā koutou e o kutua hine. Nā koutou kē i whakarite hia i tēnei taumata kōrero hei āta wānanga mā tātou katoa i ngā take nui o te wā. Kā ti huri tuatū ki a koutou katoa, a kwa hono mai a ipurangi nei e mihi atu ana. To all of my tuakana and tuahine out there, I want to say to you, kia kaha tātou. In the first instance, if you have questions, it's important you ask them. If you need to look for information, uh, sources of truth, on the vaccine kaupapa, please reach out to either your Māori health providers or to your whānau and to those trusted sources uh, that can provide that information for you. Finally, from me as a papa, not as a politician, but as a papa, uh, I've got a son who is a nurse, who is a frontline vaccinator. I've got young tamariki who are grappling with these questions themselves. 
And you know, I don't expect to nail it every time, but I need them to know that the doors are open to be able to come through and have a kōrero. So I say to our whānau and to our rangatahi, mokopuna tamariki, make sure that the doors are open so that those conversations can be had so that you can feel safe about the decision you make with respect to the vaccine. Nō reira kānui tēnei māku e o ku rangatira hurinoa tēnā koutou. Kia ora tātou. Tēnā koe e pēni a moto whaiwā ki tēnō o taa ki a mātou i tēnei a ia i pō. Ka tuku te rākau ki koe e te rau na tanga māu te karakia hei waka kapi i a tātou i tēnei a rā. Tēnā tātou, unu ia, unu ia. Unu ia i te uri tapu nui o tāne, kia wātea, kia māma, te ngākau, te tīnana, te wairoi, te atatakatu. Koe ara e rongo, kia wātea, kia wātea, aira, kua wātea, au, hai marire. Hai marire. Tēnā tātou.